she has boldly gone where no other woman has gone, scaling the flagpole of the South Carolina Capitol building in Columbia to remove the Confederate flag. It was 2015 and it made Bree Newsom Bass a social justice leader. Her response to the terrorist attack of nine Emanuel AME worshipers in Charleston, it was no stunt. It was her commitment to freedom and equality for her community, nurtured by her parents and grandmother, whose roots run deep in the Carolinas. An NYU award-winning filmmaker, Newsom Bass has marshaled her skills to lead the charge for change. On the heels of receiving the 2016 Image Award for her civil rights work, Bree stood strongly with the Charlotte Uprising, a coalition of community members, local and state organizers who demanded justice for Keith Lamont Scott, another black man shot dead by police. By any means necessary, this socially savvy advocate regularly educates her nearly 250,000 followers about systematic racism while urging them to stand strong, believing we need all hands on deck. A sought-after speaker, she uses her platform to call out injustices and the blatant displays of racism that have accompanied the present White House occupancy. If no one is doing what you feel needs to be done, then take it on yourself. For always speaking her truth to power, that's why Bree Newsom Bass is Cafe Mocha's 2019 Salute Her Community Activist Honoree. Thank you. Um, thank you so much. Um, thank you to the organizers of this event. Thank you to Cafe Mocha. Um, thank you to Ms. Sheila Eldridge, um, to the host Lonnie and Yo-Yo. Oh, yes, thank you very much. This is beautiful. Um, thank you to Lonnie and Yo-Yo and, and Alex. Those are the, Alex was the main person that I interacted with. But I know there were many other people who were involved in making tonight possible. And it has been wonderful. So I just thank you so much. Um, for this recognition and for this this wonderful honor. Um, I give thanks first and foremost to God for, for every good thing in my life. I have my own testimony like everybody has their testimony, but it was my faith in Jesus Christ that gave me the strength to do what I did that day in 2015. And so I have to give credit there. Um, thank you also to my husband, Marcus Bass, for being here with me today. Um, and always uh, on, on these many journeys that I go on. Um, I wanna salute all of the other women who are honored tonight. Thank you for the amazing things that you are doing to, to blaze the trail. Um, something that I say all the time is that activism doesn't look one way, right? And that social change and social movement looks like many people doing many things in many places. So I, I love how that is being acknowledged tonight and I, I salute you all as well. Um, I am here today, my very presence here today is a testament to the resilience of generations of women that came before me. My mother, my grandmothers, I think back to my third great grandmother who was enslaved on a plantation in Rembert, South Carolina. They have record of her talking about how she would pray to God every night that her children would see freedom. And I am descended from her youngest child, her first child and only child to be born into freedom. Um, I'm here because of that resilience. And I think that it's so important that we take moments like this to celebrate. I loved how, I loved how Lonnie got us started off with just dancing to some music and feeling good because we have to remember that taking moments for joy and celebration is also a part of our resilience and our resistance, right? I think particularly as black women and as women of color, we can get so focused on measuring our self-worth based on how much we give to others that we're not always good at pausing to celebrate ourselves. And so I love that we're doing that here tonight. Um, there's just two quick things I want to speak on. One is courage and the other is hope. People ask me a lot how I got the courage to do what I did. Um, I'm not the first one to say this, but I can attest to it. Courage is not about the absence of fear. It's not, it's not about not being afraid. I had so much to be afraid of, and I had waves of fear that would come over me as I was preparing to scale the flagpole in South Carolina. Courage is about having something that you believe in that is greater than that fear. And having, and having the determination to fight for it, right? 
these times demand courage. And I'm not saying that every time before it didn't demand courage, but I'm saying let's be aware that we are only here because of the courage that was exercised in the times before we came, right? And so we have to exercise that same courage today if we want future generations to be here tomorrow. The last thing I wanna say is on hope, because that's the other question I get a lot. People say, how do you stay hopeful? And everything that's going on, you keep, you know, I'm advocating around issues people have been fighting over for 200, 300, 400 years. This isn't anything new that I'm saying or that I'm doing, right? I'm stepping into a battle that began long before I got here. But my answer is very similar. I have hope because I know it can be done or I would not be here. So I, my prayer for all of us today, for myself and for all of you, is that when you face that moment, it may, I pray it won't look like you having to strap on a harness and climb a, a flagpole. But that moment, if it hasn't happened for you yet in this lifetime, it's gonna come where you have to summon that, summon that courage. And it's not based on the outcome. I didn't know what the outcome was gonna be from me scaling the flagpole. I didn't even know if I was necessarily gonna survive that day because of the danger that was involved in what I was doing. But I knew again that there was something greater than my fear worth fighting for, which is the freedom for myself and the freedom for my people and the freedom for all people. And I had enough belief and hope that it can change because I've seen how I am the product of courage and hope that people exercise in past generations. So again, my, my, my last word for you and my prayer for you is that when you face that moment, whatever it is, if it's on the job, if it's in your community and you're having to summon the courage and you're not sure what the outcome is gonna be, think of the ancestors. Think of the people who came before you. Think of the shoulders on which you stand. Summon their courage, summon their hope, because that's what's gonna put us over the barrier past that future that we keep dreaming for. Thank you and God bless. <laughs>